Hey everyone, welcome back to Raccoon City. You got Tim and Sid from PlayStation here. Howdy ho. And we're joined by Resident Evil 3 producer Peter Fabiano. Hey guys. Peter, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So what we're going to be doing in, um, in, in this video is actually comparing the original 1999 Resident Evil 3 to this gorgeous, stunning, uh, upcoming Resident Evil 3 remake that you've, you've been working on, Peter. Awesome. Thanks for the kind words. Yeah, of course. Like, before we kick into the 1999 footage, just from a top level, ooh, that's pretty gnarly, what would you say <laughs> is the biggest changes that have happened with this remake? Well, as you can see, we've used the RE engine for this one as well. And it's a fully reformed, redone from ground up Raccoon City. So yeah. you'll see a lot more of the city here. Um, there are changes to um, the way things play out. Um, and I think it's going to be something fun for everyone. Yeah. And it's like I'm seeing some connective tissue from like, you know, uh, obviously the Resident Evil 2 remake, like absolutely celebrated, incredible like horror game. Um, so so for just at a core gameplay level, can people kind of expect like the some of the same core gameplay that they loved with the, the Resident Evil 2 remake in here? Certainly, you're going to see a lot of similarities, but at the same time, as with the original uh, Resident Evil 3, um, there's a bit more action-oriented yeah. uh, design here, so you'll see a little bit more. Uh, as you just saw earlier uh, in the footage, uh, you have the perfect dodge, yeah. which you'll be able to utilize and, and play, uh, I think, which adds a lot more to the gameplay as well. Cool. And then when we jump back to the 1999 version, we'll see some of the original um, where they actually introduced like the 180 degree twick turn and That's the right. dodge. The dodge mechanic. It was, yeah. it was a little harder to pull off back then, but. Now, right, here we go. Yeah. So now we're Look back. Look at those graphics. Yeah. <laughs> one, one thing that's interesting that I think we'll, we'll, we'll see and would love to hear you talk about once we get back to the 2020 version is like the Resident Evil 3 Raccoon City was a lot of narrow corridors. And um, it seems like, you know, the, this Raccoon City that, that Capcom's developing is just much wider and, and fleshed out. That's right. Yeah, you'll see more open spaces. It's not an open world game yeah. by any means, but it has more open spaces and um, we wanted to balance it out. You'll have some claustrophobic areas as well. Cool. Um, so it's, it's a really good uh, balance of the two. Awesome. Oh, I remember this scene so well. This is, I loved this game um, when it first came out. I was a huge Resident Evil fan and I remember three distinctly um, I think we're going to be hearing more about it because it, it did introduce some really cool gameplay elements yeah. that we hadn't seen. Actually, here's one of them. Yeah, like this is, to me as a player, this registered as like really like the designer saying, <laughs> you're going to want to use these barrels uh, in the environment, which was totally new to the series at this point. Everybody knows what a red barrel's about now, oh, right? Yeah. yeah, so she's lining them up. Whoa. And there you go. <laughs> so satisfying. And <laughs> and um, I recall like, you know, obviously you could still lock, I think you'd, you'd hold down R1 and Worth noting that this was, you know, an original PlayStation game right. back in 1999. That's what we're looking at here. Um, and you could kind of lock onto environmental um, traps and stuff with R2 and help you kind of select that. Because we didn't have the beautiful, you know, free aiming over the shoulder camera. That's right. Camera it's not the over the shoulder camera. It's a that, fixed camera. Zombies have a Jill sandwich there. Yeah, he's, he's, he's taking a bite. Uh, <laughs> I always, even though it was always annoying to get, you know, the ankle biters there, the animation of her just like, you know, kicking kick her hands off. I love it. This is very satisfying. And this we're is, back. This is wild seeing this yeah. juxtaposition here. And I, I, I love this note here because it almost feels like reminiscent of that classic scene from the 1999 game. Right. And you'll see a lot more in the environments here, right? They're a lot more vivid. Yeah. Um, we really wanted to make. Um, the city still feel uh, alive. Um, it's at the early st uh, state of the outbreak. And there yeah. you go. <laughs> That's Ooh, awesome. Barrel. That's great. Yeah, th there's more zombie it's variety. The, the shops, like neon just signs. What we're seeing here, like Moon's Donuts and the, the Crab Shack there, like right. all, all of it is just, I feel like um, it just has more personality. Uh, it's just more fleshed out and vibrant. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the city itself is almost its own character in, right. in a way. Um, and the team had a lot of fun uh, building out. Oh, there's another one. You yeah. see the, the environmental object that you can use to your advantage. It kind of stuns the zombies. And that's brand new to this remake. I don't think that was featured exactly that same way in the original. Really cool. Um, it'd make a pit stop in a donut shop. You know, uh, Jill, she did work out of the Raccoon Police Department, so the fact that she's in a donut shop. She would know this place like the back of her hand. <laughs> we'll just go right into the stereotypes. That's right. <laughs> Peter, can you confirm that you can eat donuts? Oh, never mind. We have some new I, footage I can here. neither confirm nor deny. Okay. So the beginning of that, uh, the very beginning of this video, we saw Jill kind of 
noting that there's like a substation that she needs to go get some power Ooh. reactivated. And uh, you actually have the same task in the 1999 version, which that's what she's on her way to do here. Oh, nice shot. <laughs> you get the twofers. I'll tell you, people don't, they don't always appreciate what they have these days. I mean, this is this is what gaming was growing up, and this is state of the art. And it's still a blast. Well, it, it looked great for its time. Absolutely. Oh, sure. Yeah, it was, it was terrific. There's more zombies on screen at the same time I remember. That was a big thing about this game. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's that precious red herb. Yeah. Tim, what are you doing? The potency of your, you know, I was feeling pretty confident when uh, <laughs> when we recorded. Yeah, worth noting, you know, this is all pre-captured um, gameplay that we're looking over here. Um, but speaking of crafting herbs, mm -hmm. um, you know, Resident Evil 3, one thing that really stood out to me was the gunpowder and the reloading tool. They're seeing some gunpowder there. Yep. You could craft your own ammo, which ended up kind of becoming, um, you know, here and there, it would, it would kind of come and go with the series, but... Pete, this, was this the first time in the series? That uh, well, you had it in RE2, the reimagining of yeah. RE2, right? right. So um, it, it, it returns here. Yeah. So it's so cool to kind of see it full circle because I remember it in you know, Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 2. Right, right. And just um, it's so f I'm excited with the remake to go back and see where that kind of came from. Yeah, it's great because you have to make choices. You decide which ammo types do I want to make, right. what's more important, what's more valuable. Had, had not been seen in the series before this game, and I remember it was a bit controversial uh, back at the time in this particular game from 99. Uh, but now, I actually prefer it. It's, I, yeah. I love being able to craft ammo. Cool. It's such a precious commodity, so... Um, and yeah, at this point in, in the original, uh, Jill has to turn the power back on to parts of the city. Right. Um, and this was an interesting part of the original game, which was, I think, were these called live events? Yeah, the live selection. Live selection. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I forgot about this. And so you, then you could make the choice. Right? Yeah. And um, in this case, Brian chose to increase the electro <laughs> output, which is kind of an interesting now, you know. You get the environmental attack. Yeah. Works. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, kind of. But, but now you can kind of, yeah, do it uh, It's more organically. So, yeah. Um, and if I'm understanding right, those those aren't in the remake. Uh, what, what the is the it? live selections. That is correct. Right, yeah, okay. we this time around we wanted to tell one consistent story. The yeah. director really wanted to tell Jill's story as it goes as she goes through and what makes her way. And that's that's something that's cool is that it's not you know a one to one remake across the board because this is the substation or you know the sort of where you're trying to turn the power on. That's right. As it appears in the remake, right? Yes, that's correct. And uh, you know. It, I think it's important, and I, I can't say this enough, we wanted to make it feel fresh but yeah. familiar. Um, so you'll see a lot of new things for uh, play, players of the original, and there's plenty of stuff for newcomers alike. Uh oh uh, And there you go. Yeah. So these are the drain demos, right? Yeah, and they, they look, these guys look pretty faithful to the way that they appeared in the, um, in the original, and just very fast and skittering, um, and um, yeah, like, Definitely good for the uh, shotgun's definitely a good good tool. Yeah, for them. yeah, definitely you want to take care of them quick. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's 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 what's one thing that I feel like you know Capcom and your team is just incredible at with remakes is you know delivering on the core of what made the gameplay and the story and the characters great and changing enough that it makes it feel fresh, not just for newcomers but also if you played the original. Right. What's great about horror, right? Is is the unexpected. That's right. Um, so it's great that you say that. Um, something that we definitely want to keep true to the essence of the originals, uh, but we want to make it feel fresh as well. So if you you know we're familiar with some of the original Duh. stuff, you'll you'll find some changes here. Yeah, there's the big boy. That's you know, and of course the original game, the 1999 original, was called Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, and so it wouldn't be anything without um, our buddy, our buddy Nemesis. <laughs> That's right. So we I went and got some um, you know some footage of a battle, just a random sort of street encounter, because he'd, he'd dog you throughout That's the right. game. And yep. um, he's doing the same again in, in this remake, right, Pete? That's right. The original called him the Pursuer, right? Yeah. And uh, in, in this one, he follows the same path. He's he's out for Jill and whatever remaining stars members are out there. Yeah. Um, and, you know, here we see, like, his strategy appears to be sort of, you know, a lot of running, punching. He's got um, these tentacles that you can ensnare you with, and um, and and obviously he wants to end them. What, what, can, what can you say about how Nemesis has been, like, updated and changed just from, like, a, a, an aesthetic to even, like, an AI sort of level? Well, first and foremost, uh, aesthetically, you'll see that, that, you know, we were able to use current graphics yeah. to make him look even... Oh, <laughs> yeah, there, so there's awesome. our buddy. That's so cool. <laughs> 
uh, even more imposing. You've got this hulking menace chasing you. He looks even bigger now. He's yeah, he's, he's, he's just to scale. Um, so yeah, you'll notice oh, here man. he's got his tentacles. Um, and he's gonna he's gonna be chasing you all throughout. As soon as, as soon as you see him, you know you can you can stand and fight if that's what you choose. Oh, but uh, yeah. <laughs> you know I suggest you run, um, get out get out of his way because he's very nimble. Is he's very running fast in this one? Generally the preferred strategy in. Oh, well, you know I, I want players to play the way they yeah. feel is best for them. But uh, you know ru running is one strategy. You could try and take him down if you'd like though. Yeah, you know, and, and one of the last times that we talked with you, Pete, we were Ooh, kind of there you go. checking out Tyrant, and that's a new move. That, that <laughs> leap is huge. Um, from the Resident Evil 2 remake, uh, you know, how much of that, the reaction to Tyrant and, and how he was implemented in RE2 remake, do you feel like influenced how Nemesis is? Well, um, when the director saw what they had done with RE2 <laughs> and Tyrant, he's yeah. like, wait a minute, he's kind of getting to nemesis yeah. levels here so he didn't want to be outdone yeah and uh you know we we took that in stride of course um some of the stuff we we took from from two but um nemesis is his own yeah right his own brand of fear terror right um and uh yeah i think that'll come out when yeah. you play we'll see more of him too here we have uh jill in one of her earlier encounters with carlos who is right. from the i think it's is it the umbrella countermeasure service or um, that's right umbrella biohazard Countermeasure service. Yeah, and he's had you know similar to Jill. Like, can you, can you talk about how your team um, updated the the characters, both from like a visual and? Well, one thing that was important to us is that um, Carlos uh, appeared to be a partner to Jill. Yeah. we wanted him to feel like someone that she could rely on. Um, and with the updates to um, Jill's visuals, um, you know, with the original, she needed to stand out in that environment yeah. and, and the graphics of that day. Um, but with this game, it's very photorealistic. Right? Yeah. You know, we use some photogrammetry. Um, so we wanted her to fit in those environments and feel believable. And uh, we think that she's still the Jill that everyone knows and loves. Uh, you'll see a lot of that come out with the voice acting and the performances. Um, but yeah, she, I think she looks great. The team loves the way she came out. Um, Carlos, too. Yeah, they they really I think are uh, really faithful to the spirit of what they were like in the original, while just feeling more a little more. I love I'm a sucker for the original you know PlayStation games voice acting, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> very of its era. Uh -huh. but, but this it just updates it really really nicely. Ah. Yeah, we st I think we still manage to keep you know as an essence of the time as well. It's the 90s. Right? Yeah these guys yeah these were like a iteration of the the hunter enemy that was with the series from the very beginning but right. kind of a different take on them right right more agile yeah i remember fighting these guys these these are probably my most dreaded enemies in in all of resident yeah Evil. they're tough they could one shot you yep. and you know, I was uh, purposefully, I'll say, playing a little sloppily here, um, <laughs> and, and admittedly on easy mode. Uh, I really wanted to get this stuff. Uh, oh, this is all you. This is all me. Yeah, oh, you can blame me. Oh, there oh you go. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. They, they look more froggy in this. Yeah, one. I think it was like the Hunter Beta or or something mm -hmm. like that. That's right. Um, yeah. And um, you you would have seen one of those in the trailer, right? Yeah. Yeah. A, a little tease, and I think um, you know the location in the remake where Jill is here is a little bit different, but um, some familiar threats in the here. Series here. Oh, oh, look at our buddy. What is this? Yeah. That's our, our buddy, uh, Hunter, Hunter Gamma. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, Hunter Gamma. Yeah, they are the uh, the big mouth guys. I said that beta before. That is freakish. Uh, look at that. What's happening there? Oh, man. Yeah, you're definitely dead. <laughs> Had to make a comparison. Um, and this is going to be the final comparison that we make between just sort of a... Uh, a more focused boss battle between Nemesis that shows him like you know having a weapon and discarding it and kind of what he does in battle. Um, but uh, I remember this fight very well actually. This was a tough one, really tough. Um, so what would you say, Pete, are some of the biggest changes from like Nemesis's battle tactics that we can see in the uh, in the remake? Well, I think you saw it earlier, but uh, clearly he has that big leap that he yeah. can make. Um, and you know we have given him uh, a variety of weapons. As yeah. Well. Uh, that he can use it as his disposal, and I think you have something coming up here. Yeah, and it, cause it was a big deal that he had a rocket launcher, you know? I felt like it was yeah. kind of symbolic because most Resident Evil games ended with you using a wheel, like wielding a rocket launcher, and right. here, the main enemy just has one on him. And then this is brand new toy for, for Nemesis here. That's right, he's got a flamethrower. So fun times. Yeah, look, it looks like Jill's combating that with her own grenade rounds. Um, he looks so cool. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, man, and I just love how 
also just classic this boss battle is with the uh, I, I want to of course shoot the glowing orange <laughs> bits and um, but yeah just this environment and, and again we were talking about before but how like you know to my knowledge uh, I obviously haven't played all the re the remake uh, all the way here and I don't recognize this area from the original, so there's just a lot of fresh stuff in there. That's right. I mean, one of the things that we need to look at is is pacing. Yeah. So as we're building the game out, and there's a lot of iteration, and it, it just made sense for us to put a boss battle here. Yeah. It, it just felt right, and we're like, okay, you know, now's the right time. So we gave him a flamethrower, and uh, we get a big boss battle at the top of this construction site. Yeah. This is epic. This is super cool. So cool. And uh, he's got a, a variety of moves here, too. Yeah, it just totally changes up his, his game. Um, but we we won't. you beat him. You finally got him. Yeah, right. Did you? Of course, he's down <laughs> Did forever. You right. It. Uh, <laughs> well, Pete, before we wrap up, anything else you wanted to mention about the remake here? Well, we just hope that people get to pick it up, play, and enjoy it. Um, yeah. You know, we put a lot of work into making this something special, and uh, we think that there's something special there for everybody. Awesome. It'll be out on April third. That's great. On PlayStation Four. So thanks everybody for watching. Yeah. Thanks a lot for having me. Looking great. Thank you. PlayStation.